Hey, hey, you guys, I want to go ahead and come on here and do an ugly truth series about mental health. Mental health seems to be going around a lot. You hear about it every time you turn around. One of your friends or one of your family members have been diagnosed with, you know, oh, you're bipolar or you're schizophrenic or you're autistic or you have Asperger's or you're... And, and, and I'm hearing it all around. And don't get me wrong. I am seeing a major, major, major uptick in mental health issues. And I feel like there needs to be more of an awareness, um, you know, for the collective. Like, just in my personal life alone, and this isn't about me dealing with clients. Just in my personal life alone, I have seen some of the most outrageous shit going on in, like, the past few months. And I feel like ever since Jupiter entered into Gemini, if anybody had even something they were trying to hide, you know, any type of a chemical imbalance or any of that kind of stuff, it is being magnified by like a thousand percent right now. And people are acting out in ways that I, I it's just mind boggling to me. Another thing we have is, you know, we have Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. We also just had that North Node eclipse in Pisces as well, just only, you know, a matter of weeks ago. And we're going to be starting that, those transits between Pisces Virgo access starting in January. So stay tuned. That's going to be another next couple of years of our lives. So with that said, you know, the amount of mental health, um, like even in Hawaii, we don't have any mental health institutions here. We don't, and, and, and at the end of the day, it's not illegal to be crazy. And that's what I'm noticing is like the amount of help that people are able to get is slim to none. I mean, I was in California uh, at the beginning of this year and I was talking to a girlfriend of mine and she was like, and she works for dispatch for the police department. And she was saying how, um, you know, now they can't do anything about crazy. Be uh, anybody who's being crazy, they could be, you know, because if anything happens and the cops show up and it aggravates the situation even more and something ends up happening, then the police can be sued. So now there's this like, it's not illegal to be crazy in the state of California. They can pull up and say, hey, would you like some help? But they can't actually do something if the person denies the help. Right. And then there are places where, you know, people are knocking on the doors and saying, hey, I need help. And they're like, yeah, we don't have a bed for you. We're sorry. You know, we don't have any room. And then you have to jump through hoops in order to be able to get the help that you need. And then I've been watching in my own personal life. I have a girlfriend who's, um, you know, 17 year old daughter is going through major, major mental health issues. And this isn't some teenage brat who is doing it for attention. She's literally having such a tough time. And of course, you know, doctors want to medicate you, but then one of the side effects to all the medications is, you know, suicidal thoughts and tendencies or, you know, uh, anxiety disorders or even, you know, death, you know? And so it's like, it's a catch 22. Like, aren't you putting this person on here because it's supposed to help them? But then it's counterintuitive because of all the side effects that can come. And I have been a victim of taking like, um, antidepressants. I was on Zoloft for a couple of years and, or a couple, not a couple of years, a couple of days and ended up in a hospital because of it. And I ended up butt naked in an ambulance on the way to the hospital, you know? So it's like, they can be more harm than good. But the amount of mental health issues that we have, especially because of the last four years, you know, having, you know, the, the stresses of society and having your businesses shut down and kids not being able to go to school and, you know, and then you have the whole LBGTQ community being shoved down these kids' throats. So now they, these kids don't even know who they are. And now they have even more. And then you have people telling them all the time that you have ADHD and you have bipolar and you have have depression and you have and so 
Like we're constantly categorizing people and especially the younger generation. I'm Gen X. Like we didn't have people telling us that we were crazy or that our families were toxic or that we had mental health disorders. They were like, suck it up, buttercup, you know, work through it and get moving, you know? So a lot of us have had to learn how to self-soothe. And I feel like because everybody has all these diagnoses that they're being given all of these um, excuses in some aspects but some people like there's real legit shit going on like I was talking about my friend's daughter like um, over the weekend I got this overwhelming like feeling that I needed to go there and I needed to be there I needed to help and so I unbeknownst to them which I never do um, I just showed up you know and I was like what's going on here you know and my, my friend was so happy and I was able to help them work through some stuff, but also I got to see th some things that I've not been privy to because I've not been there. And so, you know, having a better understanding of like what the hell's really going on here. And I see this, this child who needs help, who knows that she needs help, but there's no programs in the community to help. They have, you know, the, this military school, right? But if, and, and if the kid is not, going to take um, orders from someone, then they're gonna kick them out. Even though they say, well, they cannot get out of this program. Bullshit, she got out within a week because she ran away and they were like, okay, well, we can't control this one, so we're gonna send her home. But it was like, wait a minute, but you said you, you could help, you know? And they failed. And then she tried to send her to a, dr a trade school fail she's been in and out of mental institutions and because they can't keep them fail and why can't they keep keep them it's because of the fact that if they say that i want to go home it's a voluntary program because again it's not illegal to be crazy it's not illegal to have a mental health disorder so it's like it, it's such a frustrating dynamic when you're looking at it from an outside perspective. And with Jupiter now in Gemini, it's expanding mental health issues and it's squaring over to Pisces, which is illusions, delusions, fantasies, mental institutions, sorrow, depression, sex, drugs, alcohol, codependent relationships, prison, prison of your own making if you keep yourself locked within yourself. And that's what I'm seeing all around me. And I'm not going to lie. It's it's scary because you don't know how to handle this. You Like nobody is properly equipped. And that's why they're like, well, categorize them, give them some medication or don't. And then here's the problem too, because it's not illegal to be crazy. They send them home and they're like, well, they haven't really done anything. So they want to wait until they wipe out a bunch of people and take a bunch of people down with them. You know, because it's another way of population control. You know, and I know that in some com countries, they're also legalizing euthanization where they can talk you into it. Oh, well, you would be so, you know, your family would be so much better without you, you know. And so we've glorified su suicide now. We call it what? Unaliving yourself? Let's make it really prim and proper. We're going to call it unaliving. Because it sounds so much better than what it really is, is, is offing yourself, committing suicide. So let's make it a little more pre uh, pleasant, right? It's really sad where we are in the collective and the amount of people like, and it's like, you know, I have another a, a group of friends, you know, they've, if somebody's gone through a breakup and this individual is bah humbug every fucking day and in, in their own little world and doing just whatever and when you say hey like things will get better ah whatever like and they'd rather just wallow in whatever and then what are we doing we're numbing ourselves right and alcohol and depression drugs and depression don't mix and it only creates more crazy so it's like all i'm seeing is like you know and it's sad and i don't want to call people crazy because what, what's happening right now is totally crazy. And then we've got the stresses of our environment. You've got shitty employers on top of it. You've got families fighting over kids on top of that, which only adds to more depression. It adds to more mental health disorders. It adds to, and it's like, where, where is the fix? 
where is the fix in all of this? And if a person, I remember when I was younger, you know, my sister, she like seriously had mental health issues and she was constantly always threatening, I'll just commit suicide. I'll just take my life. I'll, and finally I got to a place and mind you, this was back in the day and don't ever do this. But I was like, didn't do it because I can't handle it anymore. I can't be controlled like this anymore. I can't live my life always constantly wondering if I have to walk around eggshells around you. And, and, and if not, I'm gonna be threatened that you're gonna hurt me or you're gonna take your own life. Like, I can't do this anymore. And then when you got people who are just, you know, hey, that's just who they are. Let's just tiptoe around them. Now you're the battered wife syndrome, even if it's your own kid. So now you're passing this mental health issue onto this other person's depression and it affects everyone because then this, the, the parent pulls back because their, their kid's going through a lot of shit. Now the parent is segregated because they don't feel like they can get any help. And then when you reach out for help, like I was one of those parents who reached out to help for help and then I was looked at like I was the crazy one because I didn't have somebody calling CPS on me or calling the cops on me. So because I didn't have that and I'm saying, hey, I need help. Now there's so, ooh, something's wrong with her. She's hiding something. It's like this vicious cycle. And it's like, what can we do? What, what can be done? Because if you got any ideas, I mean, for me, I know what I can do. And I'm, I'm a one man show. I can only do so much. And I also know that everything has to be used in tandem. Not just coming to me, but, you know, okay, what other healing modalities can you do? It's almost like when we're being diagnosed, it's almost like that diagnosis is our excuses. And some people will take it and run with it. Oh, it's because I'm ADHD. Oh, because I'm ADD. Oh, because I, you know, I, I don't know what, you know, who I am. Of course you don't know who you are. You've got the government confusing you and telling you that you're not really a boy, you're a girl. Or you're a they or a them. Tell me I'm wrong, because you can't. They're adding to the mental health issues and especially in these young kids. Look how many kids are mentally just thrown through the ringer. They're being indoctrinated at school. Then there's a lot of bullying that goes on at school that some of these kids are not only being bullied at school, but they're being bullied at home. And why are they bullied at home? Because the parents are stressed out. There's not enough money. There's not enough resources. Dad may have gotten fired from his job. Now dad's drinking. Or maybe somebody went through a breakup and they're having to go through it on their own and they're going through so much pain that they're spending all that time under the influence. There is so much going on right now, you guys, and it's so hard to watch. And it's like, for me, nothing's happening to me. I can honestly say that. I'm feeling just fine. But what I'm witnessing around me is so heavy and so sad and it's so intense. And it's like, there's only one me and I can only be spread so thin. And it's like, I wanna be able to help everyone, but I can only do so much. And I can't fix anyone. So anybody who is going to a healer thinking that they're gonna fix you in, in, a, in a one hour phone call or a session, that's just not true. It takes, it took you how long to get to where you are now? It's going to take you at least that to re unwind everything that has happened to this point. There's no pill that's going to make everything better. There's not one therapist, even though they'll make you believe that they're the only ones that can help you. No, in the healing profession, I know that yes, having a conversation with me is absolutely going to be helpful because I'm going to tell you the truth of why, why you got, you are going through what you are and look at the reality. And then I'm also going to help you with the other stuff, but there's acupuncture. There's massage. There's EMDR. There's Reiki. There's sound therapy. There's so many different spiritual modalities that you don't just go to one spiritualist and be like, this person is the one that's going to save me. No one's here to save you. 
A healer is here to mentor you. A healer is here to mirror back to you what can be if you're willing to take that advice and move with it. But if you're lazy and you're so like, okay, this is who I am and I've just adopted this about myself and I'm just going to and be okay with this diagnosis and I'm not going to do anything to change it, then that's what you will be. The amount of mental health crisis that we are seeing around the world, even in our leaders, even in our leaders, and this is not being mean to Kamala Harris at all. I do not choose sides. But though, if you look at it, people will say, okay, is she drunk? Is she taking pills? I guarantee she's taking pills and they're probably anti-anxiety. When people are in situations like she's got, probably got a nervous disorder. She's got Mercury and Scorpio and she's a Gemini rising. So that right there, she can have, and she's a Libra sun, Aries moon. So she could very well have some type of a mental health. She's, she can be sharp as a tack, absolutely. But when she's put in groups and being asked questions and everything is directed at her, that's where she fumbles and she, that's why she cackles, that's why she laughs, is because it's like a nervous tick. That's not me being mean, that's me observing something that I'm seeing and I'm like, okay, it's just like Biden, Biden having dementia. My mom had dementia and so did my dad. And what a slap in, in the community's face, especially to people, and I worked at a dementia and Alzheimer's uh, community in Chico, California. I helped open it up. So there's that. So you're telling somebody who's been in that profession that somebody doesn't have dementia when I'm seeing just that. Again, mental health. And everybody has adopted it as like, and, and instead of realizing that this old man should be at home with his family in his rocking chair, spending out the rest of his days, we're doing this whole uh, elderly abuse on national television and everybody's ad adopted it and everybody's mad at this old man who doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. This is where we've been desensitized in the collective is by watching these things happening and turning a blind eye to it. Therefore, is she up for the task? Probably not because she's reaching for the highest level of all of humanity. Like that's the highest level to become the president of the United States. She's used to working in groups under people. That's Libra, that's Gemini. She's not a, a, a fixed sign. She's an earth or a <clears throat> cardinal and, excuse me, mutable. So, and we need somebody who can mentally have that task and be able to communicate. That's not me being mean. That's me pointing out the reality and the obvious. And if we were being honest, would this be a good position for somebody who has anxiety disorder? Probably not, probably not. Is this a good place for somebody who has dementia? No, you got all the codes, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know? So again, we've adopted this like turn a blind eye and you guys, it's all around us. You know, I have a, a friend who just flies off the handle for no reason and I have to tell her, I'm like, hey, listen, you don't get to treat me that way. I'm not here hurting you. I'm not here to do anything but help you. But I am going to set a boundary, but you are not to talk to me that way. And she's like, I know, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just get anxiety. I get that. But don't take it out on me. So instead of like enabling this, oh, you know, it's learning how to work through it. So my suggestion is, you know, reach out, get a session. I would love to be able to help you guys through whatever it is that you're going through. Or reach out and get a session and find a mentor, somebody that can help you through this before it becomes so much bigger. And the, the further that Jupiter gets into Gemini and the further Saturn gets into Pisces and Neptune at that 29th degree, it is only going to magnify mental health disorders to its absolute max. And I guarantee everybody knows someone who has some type of a mental health disorder. So if you are in a position to where you can help, 
even if it's just referring them to someone, please do. Don't adopt that as their, oh, well, that's just who they are. You're not helping, you're hindering. By you not making it aware to this individual that there's something wrong, because to them, they're normal. Anger's just a part of their day. Frustration's just a part of their day. That's not normal. That's not normal behavior. So if you can do something to help, even if it's just going over and washing some dishes and helping them wash their hair, do it. Help them if you can. And if you will, because not everybody will. I know I will. Will you? Love you guys all so much. And if you guys need help with the situation, you know that you can always reach out to me and I would be happy to help you work through any of these issues. Anyway, you guys, I love you all so much. We will chat again soon. Take care.